Hi, I'm Joshua Nisko, founder and CEO of Pangea Organics. Many people ask us where we get all the amazing ingredients that go into our award-winning mask. Well, I'm here in Northern California in the Pacific Northwest with James and Kari of Nature Spirit Herbs. They invited me down here to do one of the first harvests of the year of the three seaweeds that go into our mask, Gigartina, Wakame, and Kombu. As we walk down this steep cliff, we find ourselves on a secluded beach during low tide, perfect for harvesting seaweeds. The seaweeds that we're harvesting, kombu, wakame, and gigartina, were selected because they're rich in minerals and oxygen-rich chlorophyll. Seaweed is amazing at softening and soothing the skin. It detoxifies, stimulates, and increases the regeneration of skin cells and reduces the inflammation of redness. What's amazing about this process that Nature Spirit Herbs embarks on is they're not just harvesting seaweed. They're spending a lot of time with respect for the earth and the ocean. Seaweed is only harvested one out of every four plants, which I found absolutely phenomenal and completely in line with Pangea's ethos. Here marginata, uh, wing kelp, uh, or uh, wakami. I'll uh, pull up the, the entire one so you can see the whole thing. So there's the hold fast. Wow, that entire thing is clean to a rock from that little tiny... Yep. The hold fast, it doesn't extract uh, nutrients. nutrients any more than the rest of the plant. The, with these seaweeds, the whole plant is absorbing nutrients from seawater. So this, this part here is the part that's growing, and it just keeps growing, and then out here it gets tattered off in the waves, or the, the shellfish nibble it away. And, uh, and so when we harvest this one, like I say, we cut it maybe six inches from the base. We harvest an average of about one out of four plants from the areas that we're harvesting. And that preserves, again, the integrity of the ecosystem that they're, they're growing in. If we cut all of it in one area, then all the things that live there have got to move. Yeah. Or, you know, so, so if you just take one out of four, you still have a, a totally intact ecto ecosystem for all the things that just kind of slide your hand down it until yep. so you feel the bottom, then you come up six inches and cut. And then you look for the, the part that's darker. Right. It's been kind of chewed up like... Usually it's about the outer quarter. Like right there? Yeah. There you go, fishies. <laughs> and then is this in fashion right now or is it too early <laughs> in the season? Can I just... Well, Good. Yeah, I'm really excited about the level of respect that they have for the environment here and the care they take of the area that they're harvesting in. Tell us a little bit about you know, how you got to that point. The earth is so generous, you know, there's so much, uh, so generous. And, and uh, the, 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 old, the best way to give something back is to, if you're taking something, to ask and to, to uh, not take too much, you know, take it in a respectful way. So that, so that uh, whatever it is that I'm harvesting, you know, I want to, I want my children and grandchildren to be able to come harvest this thing. After hours of harvesting the fresh gigartina, the tides roll in. The seaweed is then put into mesh bags and rinsed out of all the sand and the shrimp that may be attached to the seaweed. After the rinsing, the seaweed is then put into larger mesh bags and hiked up the long, steep cliff. We harvested about a thousand pounds of fresh gigartina that day. The seaweed was then shuttled back to James and Kari's farm where it was air dried. Two days later, it's pulverized, brought to Boulder, and then added to the many amazing ingredients that make up our acai and goji berry mud mask. <laughs> <laughs>